Are you tired of the rat race in America? Are you ready to visit the motherland to relax and rejuvenate? Are you ready to explore all that Africa has to offer? Then check out the brand new Diversify Game Academy course, Prepare for My First Trip to Africa. Are you worried about being able to afford the trip? We got you. We will show you how to travel either on a budget or as a baller. Learn how to stress the value of the USD. Did you know that 100 United States dollars is worth over 1,000 South African Rand or 10,000 Kenyan shillings or 54,250 West African CFA? Are you worried about taking your kids? Get the game from Kellen Cash, a bona fide world traveler, having traveled to almost 20 countries, several of those in Africa. Get the game on taking your kids on their first trips. Learn how to find the best tickets, get the visas, and plan your own adventures in Africa. Don't let Eddie Murphy have all the fun. Plan your own coming to Africa trip starring you, produced by you, and featuring you. If you are ready for a life-changing experience, sign up for our course today, Diversified Game Academy. Get prepared and purchase at diversifiedgame.com. Welcome back to the African Diaspora News Channel. I am Wangil Zalalem bringing you this news. Today's news is a breaking news. King Mswati III of Eswatini just fled the country. It is all alleged. Uh, people uh, are doubting the report, but he still hasn't come out and said that I am still here. That's a lie. And this happens amid violence and protests in the country. People are poor. People are dying and they had enough. Uh, you see, when it's a dynasty, when it's a king and queen situation, monarchy, it's just the, the average people are going to suffer because most of the resources goes back to that dynasty. Anyways, let me remind you who he is because I've done a report on him before. We'll come back and discuss. Swatini is now known as Swaziland and the king Swati III is who we're going to be talking about today. So he made the headlines because he bought 15 Rolls Royce for his wives. Yes, he has 15 wives and I'll tell you all about it a little bit later But first let's talk about the Rolls Royces he bought and people are complaining about that because Iswatini or Swaziland is not you know the richest country in the world and um, They still take aid from the US actually why we're talking about this is because the US ambassador to Swaziland um, Came out uh, to the news and complained that this guy is living a lavish life. He just bought a second jet uh, private jet so she was complaining how US spends they give them uh, almost close to a billion dollars so far and that money is given because of aid because they claim that they need money but she has a good argument she says why are we giving money giving our taxpayers money to this people and this small group of people are the ones using it with private jets and rolls royces and one time on his birthday he wore a 1.6 million dollars watch and a suit that is made of diamonds which weighs six kilograms so this guy is no joke he likes to flaunt his wealth and um he likes to spoil his wives as well. That's the guy I was talking about. Remember, he had lots of wives and he bought all of them Rolls Royce while his country, you know, is not doing that well. Um, even with that, I was really respectful of the culture because th this didn't start from him. It was his father and his grandfather. They used to rule Eswatini the same way. So um, nothing was different here. But now I guess, you know, this social media, don't underestimate it empowers you you know you see what other countries are able to accomplish and you're like wait we're still uh, being led by a king and the king gets all these privileges but our people are in poverty our king is buying rolls royce for each of his wives he spent over 200 million dollars that money would have been spent in the country you see if it was before let's assume it was his dad um years back decades back and he buys his wife's rolls royce and as you know they have lots of wives that's that's the tradition and they only marry virgins so when he does that when he buys rolls royce maybe people are not aware how much it costs now that they know they're like wait a minute we're paying tax um we're suffering and then all these women get this luxury life that means there is money you're just 
abusing it you're just using it for something else and i understand why people can just have enough and to be honest with you whatever that people decide we are with them and we we will support them because right is right wrong is wrong and we do know how the king and his wives and the family members live a lavish life but the rest it's it's really sad if you've seen documentaries it's uh disheartening the kind of poverty that is there um but it looks like people are pushing back and it looks like it's going in the right direction. If he fled the country, that means he's scared. That means he knows something and he's afraid for his life. But my question is, did he take 19 of his wives? I believe they're 19. Did he take all of them with him? Because that's a lot of family. There are kids involved. It's not just wives, you know, they give him children. And what happens to the whole entire family? Um, is it even fair to leave them and uh, flee the country? I don't know. Anyways, guys, it's all alleged. Uh, but as of now, everybody's reporting on it. Maybe uh, he'll come out and say that I am not gone. It's just a lie. But yeah, uh, it, it looks sketchy. That's all I'm going to say about that. Anyways, guys, do let us know down below what your thoughts are about King Maswati III. I am Angel Zalal. I'm bringing you this story. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. In search of a financial opportunity to pay off student loans, a young black American woman moves to South Korea to work. As the author, Bootsy W. recalls culture shock and fun adventures in a country far from home. She's also faced with anti-black racism and featureism, quickly learning that white supremacy is practiced not only by whites, but by those that are categorized as people of color. Based on her 10 years of living abroad, the book Ego Igo compares and contrasts Korea versus the United States on subjects such as code, communal living, racism, effective protests, global alliances, warrior class, music, political correctness, health, aging, money, and the coronavirus. This blunt memoir is uncomfortable, humorous, and educational. Help fight propaganda and mainstream agendas by picking up a copy of Ego I Go on Amazon.com. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and download the African Diaspora News Channel app now available on Google Play and the Apple App Store.